KSC, presence. Ant invaders enslave their kind and subject them to propaganda. Cynics have long passed unfavorable comments on the similarities between human and insect societies, a person who carries out a repetitive, brain-dead job may be labeled a drone. An entire organization of such workers may be uncharitably likened to an anthill. And while ants in particular do share Homo sapiens' inclination towards mutual annihilation by a process startlingly similar to our own foreign invasions and wars, they may also choose to subject their invertebrate victims to a fate that some might consider worse than death. This system is also one which is not unknown within the human world, slavery. Having evolved independently several times across different ant families, slave-making is a life history which makes use of the way in which ants communicate in order to coordinate raids as well as to subdue and coerce the target species with a type of propaganda. In the European and Asian slave maker ant for Mica sanguinea, when a colony prepares for a raid on the target slave species, often the common black ant, sometimes known as the slave ant. Scout ants leave a trail of chemicals produced in their defore glands to direct the hordes that will follow. The urge to conquer will be stoked by aggregation pheromones which will cause the ants back at the slave maker nest to congregate in readiness for the raid. Because of this system, Slave-taking raids are able to be coordinated to an amazingly precise degree. Following the trails, the raiding ants will split into separate ranks, and approach the target nest from several different directions. Incredibly, these miniature Napoleons will even employ different tactics depending on what species the target ant is. If it's the black ant, all flanks will plunge into the nest simultaneously, but if the target is the much larger and more formidable wood ant, they will split their forces into attacking and defending units to prevent any counter-attack on their own nest. While the siege is underway, slave-maker workers of certain species possessing extremely swollen defore glands will spread their propaganda amongst the enemy, chemicals that convince them to disperse, while continuing to incite the battle frenzy amongst the attackers. Eventually, if the siege is broken, the defenders will cut their losses and scarper. Often they will bring with them as many of their larvae as they can, as if knowing what fate will befall those left behind. Slave maker ants will carry off all the eggs they can get their mandibles on, and bring them back to their own nest. Just as the Ottoman Empire once captured the young of their Christian enemies, raising them to be loyal Muslim citizens, so the young of the slave species are raised to be loyal to the, their new colony. Again, the chemical communication system of the ants is what makes this possible, upon being confronted with the appropriate pheromone, a young ant will carry out a certain task largely by instinct. This usually involves all the construction and maintenance carried out in the nest, and in some cases even involves feeding the master ants. Some extraordinarily decadent slave masters found in the Amazon are so dependent on this slave labor that when separated from it, they are unable to feed themselves even if a source of food is right under their antennae. In certain species, an even more insidious technique is used. During the chaos of the raid, a young slave-maker queen will infiltrate the target colony and kill the queen. Having completed this act of matronly regicide, she will then impersonate the queen by consuming the pheromones still present in her rival's dead body. As every ant in the colony is programmed to obey the every whim of their queen, the colony becomes in time nothing but a proxy for the slave-maker race, as all workers are forced to care for the new brood of masters that the queen hatches. Unknowingly, they will dutifully and carefully tend to the seeds of their own demise. But there may yet be a Spartacus of the ant world. Recent research carried out by the University of California in Los Angeles has shown that slave nannies will sometimes turn homicidal on their charges, something that never happens when they tend to their own young. In what's being labeled variously as an evolutionary resistance to enslavement or a downright act of rebellion, captured worker ants will allow slave maker young to die through neglect, dumping them in a corner, and allowing mold to overcome them, or even consuming them once they reach the pupil stage. This process is also thought to be having serious impacts on the numbers of certain slave-maker species in New York and West Virginia. 
without wishing to falsely attribute human characteristics to another species, it could be interpreted that the need to be free is one more thing we share with the ants. Thank you for watching. And don't forget to subscribe.